Hi, good morning. Uh, well, this is a video in response to um, Sonia, you know, the Cat Crazy Creations, who was, <laughs> sorry, I'm being distracted. I'm um, baby dog minded for the little chihuahua across the road. So if I get distracted, if you hear any little high pitch barking, it's not Buster who's got uh, a throat transplant. It'll be Gigi, but I'll do another video on them later. This is a response anyway. It's uh, about how long I've been knitting and crocheting, things like that. Right, I'll start, if I'm reading out the questions, that's <laughs> because I've got a brain memory like a sieve. Right, we'll start. How long have you been knitting and crocheting? Well, I started off being a knitter because my mum knitted, everybody in the family knitted, so I would be about, oh, here we go, she's back. Gigi, Gigi, there's nobody there. Sorry. Uh, I've been knitting about 60 years really. I, I got taught to knit um, sort of by my mum I suppose at about the age of seven, maybe eight. And then in the good old days we were actually taught to knit at school. Um, the girls as well as the boys. Gigi! Shush! Uh, so that was quite interesting you know. We were given these little needles and some horrible cotton yarn that had been unraveled and raveled and raveled you couldn't even tell what colour it was because it passed through many hands of many children by the time it got to us um, but I was quite the little star of the class because I actually knew how to knit beforehand first thing I ever knitted was a pair of mittens um, so that was uh, my family's always knitted come from a family of crafters so it was quite normal to be surrounded by people knitting my grandma not my grandma on my dad's side, my grandma on my mum's side knitted, my mum knitted, um, one of my aunts knitted and the other aunt knit, crocheted and the other aunt embroidered so you can tell I was in the middle of it all. How long have I been crocheting? Well, um, I'd be about 13 I think so I guess that's about 45 years ago. I'd tried to crochet without much success, just couldn't get the hang of it. Probably mostly because I was a knitter and I was holding the hook like I was holding a knitting needle. Anyway, at the age of 13, um, I had very, very bad bout of tonsillitis, which I, I used to get a lot. And it was really bad, I had fevers and everything. And uh, my mum was in the shop downstairs and of course I kept knocking on the floor. Um, wanted a drink, wanted this, wanted that. So she finished up, she brought me up a ball of wool, a crocheting hook and a learn to crochet book by Peyton's. And uh, it was like, get on with it. Well, that didn't quite work that day, but I kept on persevering. And then one day it just suddenly came. And then my aunt was downstairs and she said, you're never going to make a crochet while you're shoveling it. I thought, shoveling it? What she meant was I was crocheting it like I was knitting. Yeah. She said, you've got to learn to hold the hook, you know, like you do a pen the other way around. And I just couldn't get the hang of that. And then, like you say, you have a eureka moment. And it just twigged them from then on. I've been crochet. Right. Uh, where do I knit or crochet? Virtually anywhere I can. Um, trams, trains, buses. But um, most of the time I'm in my reclining chair in the middle of the bay window because I'm nosy. And I like to see what's going on. And also I can see the TV from there. But I do sometimes crochet in the garden if it's a nice day. Uh, when do I knit and crochet? Well, not so much the knitting, it's mostly crochet. When? Um, whenever. I mean, I'm retired now, so my time's my own. But it does tend to settle to be more the later afternoon or the evenings when I sit down and settle down to watch TV. During the day, I'm usually pottering about and doing a bit of shopping, doing things like that. So it's normally... Uh, late afternoon or evening when I do it. Uh, my favourite hooks are needles. Well, my favourite hooks used to be a firm um, called Aero. But they went out of production a long, long time ago. But I still have got some left. That was, that was what we sold in our shop. And it was Aero. Aero knitting needles and Aero crochet hooks. And because I don't knit much now, I've still got most of the Aero ones. I've tried with bamboo knitting needles, no. Circular needles, no, can't do them at all. I cannot knit free. 
I've got to knit with a knitting needle under my arm. Yeah, I don't hold the right hand needle at all. I just knit like that. Uh, my favourite hooks nowadays is I've gone on to Susan Bates. Um, I bought a double stitch twins book and it came with two Susan Bates hooks. And I was just, how do you say, hooked <laughs> on using them. And now I've got them in crystal light. I've got them in um, that grey, the grey light. And I've got them uh, in the metal. So I use them most of the time. Although I do find I've got to swap uh, hooks uh, with whatever yarn I'm using because you can't just pick up one hook. Sometimes it splits the yarn, sometimes it doesn't. Cannot use clover hooks or anything that's got a handle, you know, a proper handle. They're supposed to be comfort grip because they're anything but comfortable to me. Can't use them. Right, uh, favourite brand of yarn. I'm a bit of a sort of a, a gypsy, really. It's anything I like the feel of. I must admit, I have a bit of a passion going on for James Seabrett, uh, the marble chunky especially. Um, and I've used their double knits as well. Um, but as for anything else, it's uh, anything that I, I like the feel of that runs through my fingers and doesn't split. My pet hate is splitting yarn. Can't stand it, yeah. My favourite things to knit are crochet. Knitting has to be baby things at the moment because I don't really knit anything huge because I've got shoulders and arms problems and it hurts like my back at the top of my shoulders if I, hit, if I knit anything too big or heavy. So I knit baby things. Crocheting, again my first love was baby things but they just don't sell. So if I have to say something else other than baby things I would say retro crochet. I love the patterns and the styles from anything from the 60s to the 80s. Not that I don't like modern patterns because I do, but if you ask me what I really love to make, I'd love to go back. I find the, the style of uh, writing the patterns is just much more the way my mind works. I mean, of course I'm um, English and I, <laughs> I still have to translate in my head the US patterns. I can crochet the US patterns, but in my head I'm reading double crochet, but in my head I'm saying treble. Uh, so it does cause a bit of confusion now and again. Right, inspirations. Um, lots of inspirations. Obviously books and magazines that I get. Um, Ravelry is a huge uh, influence on me. Um, Etsy. I love to see what people are making up on Etsy. It gives me ideas. And Pinterest, the same thing. Um, again, I love YouTube videos. Anything that inspires me. Pictures in magazines that inspire me. People like Mizzy Morrowes. She's totally off the wall with her designs and that. And also I've just got into a new lady watching her. She, she's not a designer, she doesn't make patterns, but she sells her things. And she's called Jen Zeddy. And she's over in the US and she creates the kind of crochet that I love, which is brightly coloured, different yarns incorporated. Yeah, she's my inspiration at the minute. How did I learn? Well, I learnt knitting through sort of, what do you call it, osmosis, watching people knit, being sort of shown in bits and bats. My mother was always terribly, terribly busy, but she never had time to actually sit down. But I was sort of taught the, you know, the in over through off bit, yeah. Crochet, I learned through a magazine, a book. There was no such thing as YouTube in those days. Although I must confess, I'm even though I've been crocheting all this length of time, I still find a lot of influence on the YouTube learn to, you know, the Teresa and the Bob Wilson and, I mean, Teresa's not called Teresa now, she's called something else, but um, I still love the, to watch the how-to and the techniques um, videos on YouTube. As you say, you're not too old to learn. I'm not that big-headed that I think everything I do is wonderful. There's still a lot for me to learn. How do I store my patterns? <laughs> hmm. I've got thousands of patterns, and I mean that, thousands. I do not get rid of any patterns, no matter how old they may be, no matter how long I've had them. I've got McCall's knit and crochet patterns from 1960s. Unfortunately, I have misplaced, lost, lent out, which I don't do anymore. I do not lend patterns anymore. Um, a lot of patterns that I had from the 60s, 
which I'm sad about. But I've managed to replace quite a lot of the baby ones by, you know, going on eBay, Etsy and finding them there. But how do I store them at the moment? Well, um, they're in the, you know, the big green folders in the plastic um, liners. And I have got a whole library of them. I must have about 50 of these folders. That doesn't include any of the crocheting books there on um, like a, a bookcase. I must have three, four shelves full of crocheting and knitting books. And that doesn't count all the old knitting books and the old knitting patterns which are in, um, you know, those, I think you call them rubber made, the containers anyway with lids and they're in the pantry. Um, do I have any other hobbies? Well, I don't have much time for any other hobbies. I would like to say machine knitting and sewing, although I've done very little of it. But I'm going to take up sewing if it's only to make, you know, the little doll I was knitting and crocheting for. Um, I've just been sent some scraps of material, but I'll go into that on another video. Um, so, yes, I'm hoping to add sewing <laughs> again. I've got a machine, although one I don't think it's working, but my handwork machine that uh, I got to give them is working. Anyway, I think that's about it. So if anybody, uh, I'm not going to challenge anybody in particular, but if anybody in particular would like to make a response to, it was actually Sonia Cat Crazy Creations, not me that thought of this little thing. Uh, please feel free to post a video on YouTube. And I will be back uh, showing you uh, little Gigi and Buster and the couple of things that I've been doing. So I'll be back showing you that on a different video. So bye for now.